Right, good morning, welcome back, and welcome to the new shop. Now, in this new place, we're gonna make the very first job we do on a bike, the fabled clutch mod on a Hayabusa. Now, this is a generation one Hayabusa, and they came with a slipper clutch mechanism. Now, at higher mileages, those mechanisms wear, along with everything else on the bike, and they start playing up and causing problems. And there's a couple of ways you can modify that mechanism to stop it playing up and to stabilize it so it acts like a normal clutch. So I'm gonna do that today, but before I do anything else, there's no point in talking about it anymore. I'm gonna pull the cover off, take the front plate off, pull the mechanism out itself, show you it, show you what's wrong with it, and how we're gonna modify it so it doesn't do it again. So let's do that first. Right, now at this point, bike on the side stand, therefore no oil leaks out. You still got a great big open cavity there. As you can see, looking down there, there's some big scary old holes there. They go through to the sump, and even that back one, they go through to the gearbox itself. So I take the precaution of putting a rag in that space, feed it all in until it's full, tuck a nice clean rag in there, and fill up that cavity. Now. The simple reason for that, I think it's quite obvious, is that as I dismantle this, there are bolts and washers and springs and all sorts of things I'm now gonna take out. And I've only got to drop one, one single thing, even a washer, down inside there. If I'm lucky, it will go into the sump and I can drop the sump off and retrieve it. If I'm not lucky, it goes down one of the bigger holes into the gearbox and can just cause nightmares. You need to start pulling your whole engine apart. So just so it doesn't happen, the rag goes in there and bungs up all those holes so no harm can come to anything. I'm not gonna drop anything in there. Also the same goes for these dowels, these little steel tubes in the casing that locate the casing onto the engine and just pop them in the other side, on the casing side so they're safe and you don't actually lose them. Now there's nothing that can come off there and fall into the engine. Simple common sense, eh? But you knew that. Right, this is my clutch ramp mechanism, the little slipper clutch mechanism that causes all the problems. It's two pieces of steel, a ring and a collar on the inside, and they've got three teeth that locate them in each other. I'll give you a close up. Right, there it is. You've got the collar on the outside with three little slots and checking them out, they're slanted. You see on the back there, they're slanted on one side and the same with the little pegs, they're slanted on one side. So they locate together like that. And one is connected to the clutch and the other is connected to the gearbox. And quite simply, as 
the backlash occurs or the engine goes into overrun, that goes up the slants. It ramps up. As it twists, those slotted faces push against each other and this whole mechanism effectively it expands in thickness as it ramps. So the effect of this is that this little mechanism, as you shut the throttle with the revs quite high, that mechanism slides up the little ramps, expands in diameter, and then opens the clutch. It literally automatically pulls the clutch in for you. So it prevents the back wheel from locking up. Now, whether it still does that effectively or not is not really the issue. The issue is with all the free play that develops due to the wear and tear. This is metal to metal for years and years and tens of thousands of miles and it's gonna wear. No matter how hard that steel is, it's still gonna wear. And it has done. You can see shiny surfaces all over it. Now, as it wears and the increased free play causes a problem, it's when you go to pull away. You drop the clutch and it just lurches forward and cuts out because this mechanism's interfering. The free play is causing it to open the clutch very slightly, then it bites again, then it opens again, it gets confused and it just cuts out and stalls. It can be a real problem. Also, the free play itself leads to more wear. The more wear on something, the more slop on it, the more impact it's hitting itself with and it just gets worse and worse. Now, the simple remedy is to turn two pieces into one, to lock up this mechanism so it doesn't ramp or expand or work at all. That's the modification. The Hayabusa clutch mod is simply to delete the slipper clutch and lock it up so you then have a regular conventional ordinary clutch. That's what we're trying to do here. Now, there's a few ways to do that. The easiest way would be to buy a one piece version of it and that's the top of the stack. The drag racing companies machine a solid steel one from one piece of metal. They're about 200 and something pounds plus, they're a lot of money. I don't have the money to spend on this bike. And other ways you can weld them up, weld them into one piece and there are people out there on the internet doing it. I don't have the ability to weld to that standard. So look, there's a far simpler way that I'm gonna to choose to start with. And I say to start with, because those other options are available to me if this fails. And that is simply to pack out the space. This thing as it ramps, as it moves, it enjoys a little bit of free space behind. That's how it works. When you bolt it all in, you saw at the beginning, you can rattle it around with your fingers. It moves and that's how it works. If it's not allowed to move, then it won't work. So quite simply, you take a steel ring, it's a product, very straightforward, I'll cover it a bit more at the end. It's a steel ring machined precisely to fit into the back of the clutch. You then fit this mechanism on top of it and there's nowhere for this to move. It can't ramp, it can't move and rattle about at all. It's locked. Once you lock it up, bolt it all in place, put it back together, it should never give you a problem again. If it does in the future, which some people say it might do because welding it is the only answer, a one piece version is the only answer. I don't know, I hear a lot of good reviews about these. They're by Schnitz Racing. You fit them in the back of the clutch and it should cure the problem. It's by far and away the cheapest option. So I'm gonna do that today. And if it works, great, I'll let you know. If it doesn't, then you'll see me do another video doing a different option. So let's install this first, then the ramp mechanism, then the nut and bolt it all together and see if it actually locks it up. Right, very important at this point, there's a conical washer that goes in before the big nut. It's a spring washer that holds it in place. If you look at it close, it's dished one way only, and it's important that it's fitted the correct way around with the dome facing outwards, and then it'll hold everything nicely. Don't get that wrong.
Right, there we are. That's the kit, Schnitz Racing. I got it from a seller on eBay and I'll leave you a link to it underneath if you want to fit this yourself. There are many people who malign this method and suggest that you should always weld it. Well, I'll find out, won't I? And I'll feed back and I'll let you know. If there's no problem and you don't hear anything to the contrary, you know it's working. You saw it before and after. Before you fit the thing, it's clattering around everywhere and after you fit it, it's absolutely locked up solid. So that shouldn't have any problems now. Now these bikes have not just this as an inherent problem with the clutch, but they also have a slave cylinder issue on the other side of the bike. The slave cylinder itself is mounted on a very thin cast aluminium casing and it just flexes all over the place, especially now I've put big fat hefty beefy springs in it as well. The six heavier springs come as part of the kit, they're all in one price at £85. Now fitted them, there's even more weight going on that slave cylinder the other side. So in the next video I've got another kit available which is going to bolt up that other side, lock it up solid on a brace plate. I'll show you that in the next one, we'll show you how to fit it, really straightforward stuff, but that's been the clutch mod. Thank you for watching, take it easy, ride safe. I'll see you next time.